One of the things uh, which interested me a lot, particularly when I was younger, uh, is the relationship between art and politics. So the ensuing question is, like, can art be used uh, by a party in ideology or religion, and um, can it carry messages? And uh, it seems that the answer is obvious, that yes, it has been done uh, many, many times. Um, and we're looking back at the uh, Russian Revolution, where it actually uh, is one of the most uh, interesting um, periods in time in terms of that marriage between um, politics and art, where you had a, a, a period between 1914, 1918, 1918, it started in 1905, but you know, it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really uh, a state back then. So it started like in 1918 and it continued until 1928 when uh, people like Kaplan and uh, Elisitsky and Mayakovsky and, uh, and all these uh, people started to develop a new form for the new society, a new uh, canon of forms, a new which could actually transcend the idea of uh, a new society. So there we are convinced that a new society uh, needed also a new form. And they did tremendous things. I mean, remember particularly reading about uh, Kaplan uh, conducting a concert for steam pipes and, and, and ship sirens um, to, uh, from, a, from a smokestack in Odessa. Um, so <laughs> things like that. And, um, and the, the, um, in the um, in the fine arts, it actually they did the same things. They developed a form canon which hadn't been there before, and uh, they and actually influenced a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, formal experiments of the twenties and thirties in the West as well. It all came to an end by 1928 when. Uh, Lenin passed away and the new economic politics, the MEP, started. Stalin became uh, the um, prime uh, minister, the dictator, and he quickly uh, uh, got rid of all of this. And then he reverted back to an old form of art to carry the message. And uh, the result was something like a, a, um, a social... Uh, uh, socialistic uh, uh, realism and uh, socialist realism. And that, of course, then you know, kind of reverted back to something like uh, simple propaganda. And uh, the idea was not, not dead by then, though, and it was revolved, I mean, it went through uh, the idea of marriaging uh, a marriage between politics and art, then, you know, like was taken to the, to the extremes by uh, by the Nazis, uh, with Goering, uh, you know, famously, and Hitler, Hitler, Goering, Goebbels, uh, declaring a certain type of modernist art as uh, as uh, degenerate, and uh, and then they came up with again the same thing. Then Stalin came up with uh, was not called socialist realism, but was called. Uh, the, uh, the the real uh, the true art uh, of the blood and uh, and brutal boden the blood and earth uh, uh, ideology and uh, it was also becoming very quickly as a very uh, infamous uh, type of propaganda for the Nazi regime and then it continued even in you know even after that the collapse of the of the regime. Um, and all the experiences which were made by then, then in the 60s and 70s, uh, it became it renewed. And the idea was, and I grew up in the 60s and 70s, the idea was that art had to be political. Art could not stand aside. It had to be progressive. It had to be part of 
the societal change which was happening. And um, you know, funny or interesting is that when you when you look at uh, at the, the at the history of art, uh, it all started the modern art um, started with the Renaissance. And the Renaissance, looking back at the Greek uh, uh, idea of the of having the uh, the human the human in the center of uh, of art. Um, Took where was taken over by the Catholic Church, which commissioned countless works for the glorification of the Church and for the propagation propagation of the uh, of the Christian religion. Uh, so fortunately, the Church had uh, geniuses like Michelangelo, Raphael, Da Vinci, Caravaggio. Botticelli and more, um, which they uh, commissioned to, uh, you know, do these works uh, with uh, tremendous results. And the message, there is a message in there. But what they did, uh, which is pretty much like what the aforementioned Russian constructivists and suprematists did was they transcended the message. They did not just deliver the message, they transcended it. So they made it, what does that mean? I mean, they made it into something which is relatable uh, on a very basic human level. So uh, because there is an archetypical meaning into all of this work. So and that is a that is a um, it's not an easy feat, and uh, it's made it timeless, and it made it uh, still to us very moving when we're looking at a Botticelli or a Caravaggio, and uh, and we are touched deeply in our core as humans. So that means like there is something. Uh, which, if it's lacking, it is not art anymore. So, and that something is the transcendence of the theme, the transcendence of the idea. Uh, and a very good example for that is also uh, when you look at Picasso, he made three or four anti war pictures, anti war paintings, and his most famous one is Guernica. And in Guernica, he did not have to mention the Nazis. He just showed the devastation, the terror being struck into people by these inhuman type of, this inhuman brutality which people were uh, subjected to. And most famously through that horse, that, sh that screaming horse, which is, which somehow transcends the horror of the uh, Legion Condor, you know, like bearing down on helpless people without weapons and destroying them. He made another painting called Massacre in Korea, which is uh, not art. I would say it's not art. It's something which uh, is close to propaganda, where he had on one side, he had like this machinery, this machine-like people, uh, soldiers who were massacring a, you know, a, a, a group of babies and, uh, and, and women. And it was clearly uh, a, a political work where, where he pointed it, you know, and the only thing which was lacking was that kind of a uh, you know like uh, paraphernalia of the U.S. Army being uh, you know uh, stuck to the clothes of the group of soldiers, and uh, but it didn't need that you know it was like clear what the message was, uh, so it was a, an aggression of the capitalist West against uh, the poor people of Korea, and uh, unfortunately you know like 
it even happens to a great artist like uh, like uh, Picasso are taken in by this ideology and then creating some kind of uh, propaganda work after he created a timeless work in Guernica of uh, the horse of war, almost Goya-like, actually. So and um, so it's a it's it's a um, it's a thin line, and uh, today we are looking at the same conundrum, and today it's the relevance of the day. 